All right, awesome. So this is Command Fundamentals. We are talking about not just command, but technology, right? What are our peers doing to run their business? And uh, we have a great opportunity. We're talking to Daniel Ulu, the Czech ALC chair for Honolulu. And uh, we are talking about, what are we talking about today, Daniel? Chat GPT. Well, you probably hear it all over the news right now. Chat GPT. We were just chatting right before this. Uh, if you guys are Marvel fans, right? The intro for Secret Invasion, we're like four episodes in. That whole thing was generated by AI with the artist help. Kind of, kind of cool. Um, and at the same time, we're here to talk about what realtors are doing and hopefully get a really engaging conversation and some actual uh, some activity, right? Yes. So this will be a, um, we'll be doing more activities than uh, just kind of a presentation. But before we start, has anyone ever heard of ChatGPT or are currently using it in their business today? Or about three people? Cool. Heard of Great. it, not using it. Great. I'm glad you're here. So there's a ton of things you can do with Chat ChatGPT for real estate professionals. I'm going to go over just six of them that has worked for my business and also working for other agents that I know. Um, but before we start, I wanted to go over just the quick, um, the foundation of what ChatGPT is and where it came about, the history. And then from there, let's go ahead and see what the first six um, uh, ways real estate professionals are using ChatGPT. So let's, I'm gonna share my screen, Gary. And as Daniel shares his screen right again, like. Stop us, unmute yourself, use the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with, but we'd love to engage with you all during this time. I'm going to leave it like this with a web browser because I'm going to be going back and forth on the actual um, chat GPT platform and showing you guys examples on how a chat GPT can not cheat, uh, be a cheat on your business, but enhance your business for this year and you know moving forward. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about what is ChatGPT. Now, this is a lot of information. I don't understand most of what ChatGPT is. It's an AI system. And all I know is that ChatGPT um, was created in 2022. It was released in 2022 in November. And what it does, it's a large-scale language model developed by OpenAI, which is a company. It's trained on a diverse range of internet text to understand and generate human-like text based on an input it receives. So basically what that's saying is that ChatGPT draws information from books, newsletters, the website, the internet, dating from 2021 and uh, backwards. And it uses that to respond to how we, um, we would ask a question or we would want an email drafted or so forth, right? Um, it uses machine learning technique that does have a conscious that does not have a consciousness or belief so they're telling us that the ai is not a human it doesn't believe in a certain type of indoctrination um it does not know facts about the road in real time uh, but this it does have knowledge up to date for at least from 2021 of september so if you ask a question in chat gpt about this year it probably doesn't know anything about it um, but that's improving uh, as the month go by right um, it can't access personal data about individuals unless it has been shared in the course of conversation. It is this, and it is designed to respect user privacy and confidentiality. Um, it's used in various applications, including but not limited to virtual assistants, creative writing, brainstorming ideas, tutoring, and more. Um, it has a potential limitation such as generating incorrect or nonsensical answers, sensitivity to input phrasing, um, open AI has mitigation strategies in place to handle those, uh, these kind of issues. Um, but that's just kind of the gist of what ChatGPT is, but we're going to focus on what it does for real estate professionals, right? So just some quick facts about it. It was launched. Um, ChatGPT is an amazing chatbot created by OpenAI, open AI for the, which is a company, uh, for online customer care. That's the origination, uh, where it originated from. Uh, it is a pre-trained generated chat, which makes use of natural language processing. Um, the source of its data comes from textbooks, websites, various articles, and it uses its model, its own language for answering to human interaction, right? Uh, launched again in November, 2022. 
Uh, when it first launched, it had about a million users in its first week. Now it has about 10 million uh, users per day, which isn't much, but that's obviously going to change in the next year. Um, let's see. Headquarters in San Francisco. The cost is free for users, uh, but there is a, a paid subscription you can pay for for more enhanced services. Any questions on this, guys? What chat GPT is before I move on? Okay. This is my favorite part. And I honestly, chat GPT is like a game. I play with it all day. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the first thing, what you can use chat GPT for. So is anybody using uh, listing descriptions right now for chat GPT? Nobody yet? Okay, good. So this will definitely change. So who here had a listing and sat at the computer for hours and couldn't think of a description about their listing, right? That was me for literally two to three hours. And that's why sometimes I delayed my listing going live is because I couldn't think of a good listing description. And we all know that's important, right? And so thankfully, ChatGPT helps you improve or rewrite, summarize, expand and shorten descriptions. And it can even generate marketing language for your description as well. So let's give an example. So ChatGPT, let's go ahead and I'll show you how you get to here first. So when you want to register for an account, anyone can do it right after this. And it's free for users, but I paid the subscription, which is about $20 per month. You go to this login and you just sign up. And then you can connect your email. Boom, you're done. Or you can uh, create, uh, actually use your email. We'll be better. Once you sign in. What's what's the login? Or not the uh, login, but what, what's the site? The website, it's openai.com. And then I'll have the resources for you at the end as well. Okay. So once you log in, and it's pretty, the platform of ChatGPT is super basic. It's like you're just, it's a chat room. That's all it is. And so there's three, ver there's two versions. There's 3.5 and there's ChatGPT 4. Now you would want to use 4 because it's the more enhanced version. Uh, this was released back in May. So I'm going to click chat, chat GPT-4. And then I want to, I already have a description of my listing that I'm coming up on a market soon. It's in Makaha. So I'm going to paste it here. But I kind of want to summarize this listing, right? This description. I want to make it short, though. It's too long for me. So I'm going to say, I'm going to tell chat GPT, I'm going to instruct the the AI to summarize the following description, the listing description. We'll summarize the following. And this is how easy it is, guys. It is, guys. Okay. Watch what it does. This spectacular four bedroom, three and a half bath house located in scenic Makaha Valley. It includes a spacious kitchen, equipped with stainless steel appliances and an open concept living area. Their property also features a home office, a private backyard with a pool and a two car garage. The suite offers a walk-in closet and a high-end ensuite bathroom. How does that sound? It's different, right? That was kind of boring, but let's go ahead and make it uh, I want to change the tone. So it's a it's a luxury listing. I've never sold luxury. I don't know how to speak luxury, but I want the description to be in a luxury tone, right? So same exact description, but I'm going to tell the chat GBT to change the tone of the description. So change the tone of this listing description to a luxury tone. Now I'm gonna copy this, my original. Watch what it does. <clears throat> Indulge in the grandeur of this magnific magnificent four bedroom, three and a half bath masterpiece nestled in the picturesque Makaha Valley. A culinary delight awaits you in expansive gourmet kitchen equipped with premium stainless steel appliances. The residence unfolds in an open concept design, revealing a sophisticated living area perfect for the hosting refined gatherings. Discover productivity, privacy in your dedicated home office, so on, so on, so on. 
How does that sound for a listing, for a, for a luxury listing description, right? Isn't that amazing? It completely changed the tone. And this is something I would use on a luxury listing description. I wouldn't go with this, but this would definitely impress your clients. Any questions on the tone and in the summary? Okay, good. That's going to make life so much easier. Right, isn't it amazing? <laughs> but say I wanted to keep my original description. It's just an average single family home. It's not a luxury, but I wanted to expand. I wanted to create and expand the description, right? So I'm going to tell ChatGPT to expand on this. So expand on the following. I remember you don't have to use exact words. If you put it in your own writing and how you instruct the chat GPT, it knows what you're saying. So expand the following listing. Even if I make a mistake, well, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, shit. Sure. No. Well, expand. Okay, and then I'm going to paste this here. So I want to expand on that. Okay. So it's not giving me a luxury tone, but it's giving me a longer paragraph, right? See how quick that was? I didn't Wait. want to ask the question while you were typing. Oh yeah, go ahead. Have you have you found uh so it's it sounds like it sounds like it's it's it is helping you and at the same time you need to kind of learn as an agent what it is that you want to right yes. change the tone or expand upon this description and how long did it take you to kind of come up with those certain things that you want it to do? Um actually I got it from another agent. They gave me these keywords and what to use and how to um instruct the AI on to, to do certain things um with uh the description and stuff. Is that what you're yeah thinking? totally that does that's okay. totally helpful. Yeah. It's a little bit of a learning curve or at least like clarity yeah. in your mind as a creative, right? To kind of just say, hey, what is it that I really am, am I asking? Right. The learning curve is the learning how to ask the AI. Um, and once you know how to ask the right question, then you'll get the right answer from it. Okay. So you see how descriptive and longer that um, the the response is for this one. Now, obviously, as an agent, you have to go and reread it, make sure it's accurate, and then you can change it up a bit and stuff. So I always reread it. Sometimes the AI is not one hundred percent perfect, um, but most of the time, I would say ninety nine percent of the time, it gets it right. So. Any questions on listing descriptions? Okay, let's go ahead and go to emails. This is my favorite one, actually. I have a hard, I struggle with a lot of the emails and what to write to a buyer, seller, agent, and sometimes into where sometimes my tone can be a little bit forthcoming, uh, can be a little bit too rough, I guess you could say. Um, and so I would have to soften my tone and my email sometimes. And so, um, I had a buyer last week, he wanted to quit showings and he wanted to rent instead. I was so pissed off about it. I was mad and he only communicated an email. So I'm like, okay, how do I say an email where I'm not mad at him, but I have to give him facts, right? On, on why buying is better than him paying $1,200 uh, $1, a month um, and what that could look like two years from now because he wanted to wait two years. So. I went to ChatGPT and I asked ChatGPT to help me draft an email that's convincing to the buyer to convince him that waiting two years from now would be um, wouldn't be a good financial decision for him. So I told ChatGPT GPT to draft me an email, or actually write me an email, and write an email. To a buyer about how renting at a rate of twelve hundred a month for two years can have a negative impact on his finances compared to buying a home now. Subject line. It gives you a subject. 
And it says, I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to discuss an important aspect of your current housing situation and potential financial plans. I understand you're currently renting a property at $1,200 per month with an intention to continue this arrangement for at least two more years. While the decision may be uh, suit your immediate needs, I believe it's an essential to consider the long-term financial implications. Over two years, your rental payments will amount to $28,800. So I calculated the amount of the rent that it's going to go to in the course of two years. A considerable sum of money that could be invested towards owning a home. This money, once paid in rent, offers no return in asset ownership, unlike when you purchase a property. Furthermore, the current real estate market offers favorable conditions for home buyers, which is true. Um, but you got to edit this part because we don't have historically low mortgage rates right now, right? So you got to change that. It's thinking about 2021 when this was, um, that's the data that it's pulling from. Uh, if you were to secure a mortgage now, the monthly payments could be comparable, yada, yada. That makes sense? You see how that's a little bit more convincing if I wrote the email on my own? I probably would be like, you know, short and simple and probably wouldn't have closed on that buyer. So any questions on emails and how ChatGPT can help you win more deals via email? There's a, there's some uh, like third party add-ons that you can get for Gmail, like through Chrome and stuff that like right from within um, Gmail you can kind of do that same thing too. Yes. Uh, I haven't played with many. I've played with a couple, but I, I'm really not using them full on yet. Yeah, I use jasper.ai, which I'll give you the information at the end of this. Um, it's integrated with my Gmail to where I don't have to go back and forth on ChatGPT and write an email. I'm already doing it inside of the email. So any questions on emails? No. Okay. Uh, the next one I have is blog posts. Does anybody do blogs in here on your website? I know maybe not too many agents do it now. Um, but blog posts are good because it improves your, um, all right, that's grammatical. Uh, improves your website's uh, SEO, right? The search engine optimization. So with blog posts, you can ask ChatGPT to create ideas for you. Um, you can help it draft posts for you on your blogs. You can help uh, ask ChatGPT to edit or proofread what you wrote. Um, and again, SEO, which is search engine optimization, this helps get you to the top when people do Google searches for on your website. Um, post descriptions, just kind of similar to a listing description. And then you also can have ChatGPT help you write engaging titles. So for example, I want to write a blog, blog post about VA loans for home buyers, right? So I'm going to ask ChatGBT in this box, write a short real estate blog post about VA loan for home buyers. Let's kind of be more specific and say in Hawaii. Our first, harnessing the power, the title is Harnessing the Power of VA Loans for Home Buyers in Hawaii. And it goes on what is a VA loan? Key benefits of a VA loan. Yada, yada, yada. Isn't that cool? That's you, pretty cool. Who, who here, and there's a question in the chat too, uh, yes. Oksana is asking, and do you, and we could actually throw it out to everybody in the room, who here does currently write blog posts for their website? I don't, I, I don't as much as I used to, but. I don't do blogs. <laughs> so this, like Daniel said, this is a great, uh, content creator, right? Asking the question, having it generate. What, so what you could do currently with the command sites is you can tag on a, a you know, create a landing page for a blog. Uh, there's different things you can do on that. And mm -hmm. knowing that at Family Reunion earlier this year, they talked about customization and personalization more coming for your agent sites. I have a feeling it's right around the corner. Yeah. So when we, when, right. So right now we create a page and there's a template that, that I can help you generate different things and, and formatting may not be that sexy now, definitely awaiting to see what those new agent site customizations look like. Cause one of the things they showed was like, Hey, write a blog. 
Yeah. Right. So this is perfect time. So that's still in the works, uh, Karen. That is uh, totally one of those things when they say, hey, this is coming soon. And uh, I heard that was a, a, on the roadmap for this year. And of course, they always unveil big, big things right around family reunion and mega camp. And mega camp is in August. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I remember them talking about that. And that was really good because at the time, um, my team lead was like, she was about to pay $10,000 for somebody to create a site when Keller Williams was already coming in, coming with it with command. And the good thing about the new website is everything we're talking about today can be applied towards your website. So like the blog posts, we're going to discuss YouTube video and Instagram and TikTok videos as well. So um, another one I like to write is I have a hard time with um, creating titles for like my videos um, or say a buyer seminar. I think buyer seminar is just kind of boring. So I, I asked the AI the other day is create an engaging Engaging title from my first time home buyer seminar. Unlocking your dream, a comprehensive guide for first time home buyers. How does that sound? A little bit better? You can regenerate response. So you can keep asking to regenerate a different response, and it will give you all these different responses. ABCs of home buying. From renting to owning your first time home buyer seminar, laying the foundation. That's a good one. Um, first home, no fear. Oh, I like that one. Navigate your way to your dream home. So you can ask it to, even for blog posts, um, description, so forth. Yeah. Any questions on that? Titles? Yeah. Let's go I saw with. that first. I saw that first title go away. Is it still? Oh, it's it says two, two of two. Oh, yeah, it did. Because I once you regenerate a response, it will take away the old one. And then it will give you a new one. And then you can, you can give feedback on the responses to the AI. You can say better. So you're helping build a system as well, just like how we do a comment. So okay, uh, number four, buyer and seller scripts. So you have access to all the scripts right now from uh, the market center, but say you want, you know, you want different, you want to see what the AI can give you. AI can offer you buyer consultation scripts, seller consultation scripts, negotiation scripts, ob object objection handling scripts, follow-up scripts, and even explaining complex concepts. So um, in regards to, I did one for price reduction. Like I didn't know how to respond to a seller's email. They wanted to keep the same price. So going back to that, I had to write an email a few weeks back to convince the seller, and I like to do it via email to reduce the price um, of, actually it wasn't email, sorry, it was over the phone, but I, I already know how to, uh, a short script, but I wanted to see what the AI would give me. And so I asked the AI, create a script for me that can convince my seller that, my seller to reduce, and I'm gonna to try to be as specific as possible, right? To reduce their price of their home from 630, because that's what the price was, to 610, and expand on the benefits, because we don't have an expand on it, of reducing the price. Let's see what AI gives us, right? So, hi seller, I hope you're doing well. I'd like to discuss our pricing strategy for prop for the property. The seller responds, sure, what's on your mind? I would say, first of all, I would like to acknowledge how, both, how we both value your property. It's a fantastic home and a great location and it's unique features certainly justifies a premium. However, I've been conducting a thorough analysis of the current market conditions, market conditions and buyer behavior. And I believe it would be beneficial for us to reconsider our current asking price. Seller said, okay, tell me more. You say, well, the real estate market is incredibly competitive right now. Is it? So you got to adjust it, right? Uh, well, we're set a fair price reflecting the home's value of 630. There are comparable properties in the neighborhood listed for slightly less. By reducing the listing price to 610, we'll be positioning your property at an excellent deal, which could potentially draw in more interested buyers. Uh, is that correct, right? When we reduce the price, 
we expose it to more buyers. So I said, but don't, but doesn't that mean I will be making less from the sale? And you'll say, well, I understand your concern. However, a lower asking price doesn't necessarily mean less profit. In fact, it often leads to a quicker sale. Faster sales reduce the holding costs, like the mortgage, interest rate, other expenses that you'll have to pay during the period the house sits on the market. That's true, that's a fact, right? Furthermore, a lower price can often spark a bidding war, a bidding war truth. Uh, when buyers see a great deal, they're more likely to put in a competitive offer, sometimes even above the asking price. Our aim is to attract as many potential buyers as possible to ensure we receive the best offer. Oh, seller says, I see that makes sense. You'll say, in the end, our primary goal is to sell your property in the shortest amount of time and for the best price possible. I believe adjusting the price slightly could be strategic move to help us achieve our goal. Seller says, all right, I trust your professional judgment. Let's go ahead with a new price. Thank you for your understanding. I'm confident this new strategy will attract more motivated buyers and help us seal a favorable deal. How does that sound? Is that kind of convincing? ChatGPT gave facts. So we these are all facts that you use on an objection handling script, right? Um, for reducing the price. Uh, in regards to if the seller holds on to their property longer, they have to pay insurance, uh, maintenance, upkeep costs, as well as interest rate on the mortgage, right? Um, and then also it's talking about bidding war. Doesn't reducing the price expose the property to more um, buyers and possibly get a bidding war? So see how ChatGPT already knows scripts. So how does that, will anybody ever use this in their conversation with a seller? It's a lot, but you don't have to use everything, but you at least get the, the, the foundation of your conversation, right? So any questions on this scripts? Okay, let's go to YouTube videos. So anybody doing YouTube videos or any type of video marketing in their business? I think, yeah, we got anybody, Carrie? Yeah, I saw Danny raise her hand. Okay. Um, the reason why I was so hesitant on YouTube videos is because I didn't know what, you know, content ideas, I didn't know what to say in the video. And thank God for ChatGPT because now you're able to ask ChatGPT for content ideas as well as um, scripts on what to say, exactly what to say. So let's see what kind of content ideas ChatGPT can give us. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT, create real estate, because we're in real estate, content ideas for my YouTube channel. Look at that. First time home buyers, top 10 mistakes to avoid. How to choose the right neighborhood for your new home. Step-by-step -step guide to securing your first mortgage. Home staging tips to sell your property faster. Understanding home inspection, what buyers should know. Pros and cons of buying an older home. Walking through a luxury home. Condor versus house, which is the right choice for you. Isn't these great ideas that I probably would never have thought of on my own? I probably would have been sitting on the, uh, a table with a piece of paper for probably hours trying to figure out some great ideas. Um, now let's ask it to create a script. Create a video script about uh, the pros and cons of buying an older home for my YouTube video. Under five minutes. I want to keep the script under five minutes. I don't want to long to you. You got to be specific, right? See how it. It already has a time in there. Intro, 15 seconds. Pros, one and a half. You see how detailed that is? So it says, on screen, you're facing the camera. Background could be an older house or a real estate theme set. Say, hey there, welcome to my channel. Today, we're diving into a topic many home buyers wrestle with. The pros and cons of buying an older home if you're torn between a house with character and a modern build, uh, build this video for you. And then the pros is about a minute and a half. And then it tells you what to do next. And it says, okay, you, let's start with the pros of buying an older home. One of the main attractions is the charm and character these properties often have, yada, yada, yada. And then it goes to show next, next, next. Look, it has a full script for you. 
and it times it as well, and it tells you what should be in the background or where you, the location you should be at. How does that sound? Nice, I like that. I need Everything's that. already done for you. You don't have to do anything. You can go in there and tweak it a little bit, but I think what it gave me was a pretty detailed script. You can shorten this to a two one minute video if you want. Just tell ChatGPT you want to keep it under one minute. So, any questions on that? Video, video, video. That's what, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Crystal? That's one of my ahas because I was actually gonna like look into these social media people because I hate doing I I hate it I literally do, um and I use some apps like with captions but I'm like I don't know what to say and yeah 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 but that like literally tells you everything to do that's literally like those movie scripts where they yeah. have detail like and that's what that's probably the number one reason is why agents don't do videos is because they don't know what to say or they don't know um what kind of content um to have right for their videos and so now you do so there's no excuse on why we shouldn't be having more videos out there on our social media platforms any questions that's on? crazy right Co company of systems and models this is only going to help you guys do and focus on your 20 percent, right what's your yes. one thing get that time back in your day because this is man this, i've never i've never seen i've seen somebody play with it before guys but this is like the first time we're I'm, I'm really seeing all of this stuff and i would love for yep. all of us on this call to you know we'll send out an email we'll get you guys the resources and on that thread like continue to just pour in uh victories and yep. how it improved your business overall this especially because i was looking into like paying somebody but it's free ish <laughs> yes. so the platform itself is $20 per month if you want to get the uh more of uh, the professional plan I would say partner with another agent maybe two other agents and split the costs and you guys both can share it yeah could you could you speak to um some of those extra perks or the benefit yeah. of paying for the $20 I'll go out towards the end we'll just go over the last one gotcha. Uh, the last one is Instagram, TikTok Reels. Now, most of you are probably on Instagram. I use Instagram every day. You probably see my stories with my dogs and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I'm on Instagram all the time. And so Instagram and TikTok is a short form content, right? It's not like YouTube where it's longer, like could be five, 10 minutes video. Instagram and TikTok is meant to be a little bit shorter. Um, and so again, with the YouTube, it can create um, content ideas, scripts for you, using for stories. Um, captions, hashtags, engaging questions, prompts, and answering questions. If you get comments and stuff, it can help you respond to uh, questions that you may have difficult responding to. Um, so I want to, I've always, you know, when you have a just listed property or just sold, you don't know what to put in that caption. So I used to like copy and paste from other real estate agents on their just sold descriptions. <laughs> on the, the Instagram, and then I used to just kind of tweak it into my own. Now you don't have to do that because chat GBT can do it on your own. So I need chat, create a caption from my Instagram. So this, I did this last week is I'm hosting a supply drive for um, the animal shelter in my community. I had a flyer and then I posted on my Instagram, the flyer, as well as I needed a caption. I just didn't know what to say, right? So I asked chat GBT, create a caption for my Instagram posts, got to be specific. It knows what Instagram posts are about my upcoming animal supply drive. And I'm going to put dates in here so it knows what dates to put. Starting July 17th to 27th with drop-off locations at PetSmart. I want them to include where people can drop off the, the supplies, right? At PetSmart across a wall, PetSmart locations across a wall. Mark your calendars and it includes emojis too. Uh, our annual animal supply drive kicks off on July 17 and runs through the 27th. We partner with PetSmart locations across beautiful Oahu to ensure donations reach our furry friends in need. Swing by to drop off uh, food, toys, beds, and other pet supplies you'd like to give. Let's make a positive impact. See, it has humor, right? 
positive impact <laughs> together. And then it includes all the hashtags. I would not probably know what you know hashtags to include. And all I'm going to do is copy this and post it on my Instagram. Something that would have took me probably an hour to think of, ChatGPT did it for me. So you're going to do the same thing uh, applying to your just sold properties. Um, you say ChatGPT, create an uh, Instagram post for my just sold listing. It's a two bedroom, uh, one bath condo in Honolulu, and it will create a caption for you. You got to let them know the details. So it doesn't know what property you sold. Um, but if you give them details, it will create something like this. Any questions on that? So no more doing captions on your own. Go to chat GPT. Okay. Um, hashtags. Uh, I know a lot of people struggle with hashtags. I say create hashtags for my new listing on all. So it's going to give me ideas for hashtags that are trending. You see all that? All for real estate, Hawaii homes, dream home Hawaii, home for sale on Oahu, et cetera, et cetera. You just copy all of that and then post it on your Instagram. So any questions on slide uh, number six? Was that helpful? That's, that's cool. I'm going back. There was a great question in the in the chat. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about any copyright issues if we were using a language like straight from the? And that might be something we need to research and take a look at. But uh, copyright issues. Mm -hmm. Um. So I read about it. There's no. There was no copyright issues. Um. With the system. Um. I don't. Uh, college students were using this in college and they're having um, chat GPT write essays for them. Um, and the essays were, you know, they were, they were um, there's no violation of copyright laws in the, in the essays as well. But they, they eventually got caught by their professor for using chat GPT. But as an I've never, you know, seen anything in the news about it, so. That's a great question, Nepali. And it might be something like as this, is new and emerging, we might want to keep an eye out and ear to the ground floor, right? Yeah. Oksana, you have a question. Uh, not a question I want to add to the copyright. I use it in reverse whenever I want to use something, for example, from the internet on just some research, I put a please rewrite or please rephrase and I put just the, the paragraph and it rewrites completely. Uh, and actually does a better job when rewriting, and then you can just post it. Thanks. We can ask chat GBT on copyright issues, right? So we can say- Yeah, and, and I we, actually like rewrite to avoid copyright issues or- Because you would be concerned with copyright issues using chat GBT? As of the training cut off in September 2021, OpenAI used terms to indicate the output of ChatGB3 is not subject to copyright claims by OpenAI. However, users of ChatGPT are responsible for how they use a system, including compliance with all applicable laws and regulations. So it doesn't give you a clear cut answer, but yeah, it does say you could be held responsible. So. Any other questions? So the chat GPT, um, it's, there's a free plan and then there's a professional plan. The professional plan is $20 a month and that includes um, model GPT-4. So GPT-4, which I have up here, um, it responds faster, it's smarter, it has more data um, and it gives you better results um, compared to the, this, ChatGPT 3.5 is pretty good, but 4 is a lot better. So I, that small investment of $20 is worth it. It will save you a lot of time. And you can not only use it in your business, but you can use it in your personal life as well. You can ask them, you know, about your relationship life, I guess, if you want to. And how to have a better date. <laughs> or, you know, anything about your problems. You can ask them problems that you have, so. But... Any questions on that, ChatGPT? Any uh, limit to the number of uh, interactions, questions you can ask? No, there's no limit. So it does. The, sorry, um, let me clarify the question. With yeah. the ChatGPT 4, does it limit? 
was that what I got recently? I had, I used 3.5 and I then switched to four and they it got me like, okay, you reached the limit. You can switch back to 3.5. Oh, there's a limit. Have you, have you seen that? For the, the, is that the free version you're on? No, I'm the paid one on the four, but for some reason it, it told oh. me that it's a limit that of the four, you can go back to 3.5. Yeah, so there's a cap of 25 message every three hours. Um, okay, yeah, I did more than now. that. <laughs> and I think there's, um, they go by the amount of people, like the traffic on the system. So when there's more people using the system, it slows down. The responses slow down. That's what I read about. But so far, oh, I haven't. Roxana, you are working it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm using it all day to write everything. Yeah. And one more thing uh, before we end this is you can use ChatGPT to write contracts um, like team. I wouldn't say like purchase contracts for like buying a house, but you would use it for like, say, I use it to write a contract for my showing agent, um, a showing assistant. Um, and I had ChatGPT. Let me show you guys real quick. Write me a contract from my showing assistant. And I'm gonna let know I'm a real estate agent. So yep, fill in the chat, help you write business plan. So they add Hawaii to let it you see how it's giving me a warning about the contract. But now I have a showing assistant agreement and I can literally go in and make it into my own. But it gives you a template. Isn't that pretty cool? So, and then it tells you, of course, you would have to, you know, get legal advice and this kind of stuff. So, I need notarize or just like. What's that? You have to get like notarize or anything or just. Uh, not necessarily enough for these kind of things. I don't think so. So. Um, I use the free AI app. Um, oh, the good, good. Thanks for bringing that up, Crystal. Uh, ChatGPT does have an app as well. Um, you can download. Um, I use it when I need to like respond to a text and I don't know what to say. And I just go on the app. So chat GPT is the app as well. So just type in chat GPT and then it's the same platform that you see here, but on an app version. So I use the free one. So I use Ask AI, but it works kind of the same way. This is what I, I write like all kinds of stuff, but like mission statement for real estate, convincing people about solar energy. I'll put um, real estate overview or um, this is a this is one of the first ones I tried tried it with but letter to buy a distressed property so it'll come out with the whole thing yeah it does that too so but yeah you, remember chat gpt is the is yeah. created by open ai which is the founders of the the tech um, but you have a multitude of other companies that tapped into the same technology um, that you could use as well um, some of them might be free, some of them might be more expensive, some of them might be better than ChatGPT. Um, I use jasper.ai for my emails. You can use that as well. Um, it's just a different platform, but essentially the same, uh, I believe, AI system. So any questions on this about any of the six ways real estate professionals are using? Now there's more. So if you figure out another way that this can improve or enhance your business, Please share it with us. Um, if not, then that's all I have, Karen. If anybody has that's, any questions. That's a great look. And yeah, any anybody have any questions? About the emails, posts, scripts, videos. I would love to see what everyone's going to be using after um, how they're going to implement this in your business. And Daniel did a, a great class with like Facebook and social media stuff before, right? And again, the message with that, if you're not doing it now, lean into the data that you're getting from this and the script and then just start, mm -hmm. right? Again, if you haven't heard us say that, just start, right? People appreciate the um, authenticity and I'm, I'm only assuming, and I'm not sure if you would want to do that with the chat GPT, but I've heard, right? People have a little misspelling here and there just to kind of make it seem like it's a human behind it that sends it out every so often right yeah. but the chat D gpt it, it sounds and looks like the only limit is your imagination possibly your spelling yeah 
and you can proofread your spelling as well. Whatever you want, you can proofread, edit it for you, modify, make it better, what have you. So, awesome, guys. Thank you. Thank Daniel, you so thank you so much, man. Thanks for coming on, everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend and go for it and use ChatGPT. We'll send out those resources to you. And again, we would love to get back on that thread and, and shoot out some best practices that you found and your wins, because we can all win, right? With that, by sharing that. Um, just a quick note, Command Fundamentals, two weeks from now, we'll be talking about how to get paid in Command. Everybody's favorite, compliance. <laughs> but we'll talk about quick wins. We'll get you some help. Definitely. Uh, come with your questions and we want to make life easy for you. But again, like we'll, we'll do this every other week because the weeks that we don't have command fundamentals, Zach Younger, our regional tech trainer is teaching take command of your business, right? All that is on your training calendar. And again, if you do have questions along the way, uh, you can reach out to your ALC tech chair, right? Daniel Ulu, uh, Angela Ching on Maui, Brendan Alcisto on the big island and or reach out to me at kwhtech946 at gmail.com. But have a great Friday, great weekend, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Aloha.